Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, this is the beginning of Rotec. I'm just going to take you through my first few opening moves that I normally do. If you're a new player, um, there's a few things that you can try and do before you start. I went over this in one of my other videos, but I'm just going to actually walk through it right right now to show you kind of what I do. Um, so the first thing is the Argo. We're going to go to Engineering and go to Ship Upgrades. Argo, you want to get starting started working on it as fast as you can. You want to start off with repaired power conduits because you really need that to get a lot of other things um, going. You need it for your second mech bay and you need it for training modules, which we need right after this. So power systems are first. So the next thing you want to do is go to your mech warrior barracks. Um, this is what I normally do. You're more than welcome to keep all these pilots if you want, but I was just going to go through and I find the cheapest ones. So this guy is like 36, or sorry, 33,600. Goodbye. Uh, Behemoth's always good to keep because she's really cheap to uh, hang on to, th 13,200 a month. Uh, Big Sly is 40,000, so we're going to we're gonna turf him. Um, Decker is 32, Glitch is 24, she's good, Medusa is 40, goodbye. Um, feel free to keep them if you want. Like I said, I'm, I'm only keeping the lowest, lowest pilots. I'm going to dismiss Decker too. So we're down to Behemoth. 13,200. Um, I'm free. For 24,000 for uh, Glitch. And 26,400 for um, Succubus. So we're going to quickly go through and just allocate points here. Um, I, will, I usually always go Gunnery first. Um, just going to confirm that. Unless you know the person's going to be a scout or whatever, then you can kind of go down this tree uh, if you want. But um, it's not always necessary. The other thing you can do too is just kind of max out a bunch of these if you want. It's up to you. Um, I, I always do gunnery first. We're going to get enough experience to bring, bring one of these up in the next mission or so, so that's fine. Training confirmed, Commander. And Succubus will do the same thing. Going to go with gunnery. Confirm. Training complete. Now I normally allocate, uh, I go through custom setup, I allocate my primary mech warrior with uh, 10,000 XP and then I just kind of go through and make sure I have everything ranked up to 4 to start. Because then, if I'm really not sure, w like what I'm planning on doing for my main character, I can st start off at any point along here, right? I have access to everything right away. But I am going to go with gunnery. Um, if you're a first-time player, my suggestion is just go with gunnery first, um, because you're going to need those the extra chance to hit. You'll be very, very frustrated when you first start playing this game, because I know I was. It's really difficult to hit people. Um, we're going to have a quick look at our mech bay first off. Um, now you can jump into a battle right away if you want, or you can take a, a little bit of time like I normally do, um, and just have a look at a good look at the mechs that you've got. So I've got a stock uh, trebuchet here. Have a quick look at it. So a pair of LRM 15s, three medium lasers. The last thing I want is to have my LRM ammo in the torso. So I am going to pull it and just put it in the legs for now. Um, going to have a look at my armor status right here. So I want to pull off the legs a little bit. Um, surprisingly enough, I don't get hit in the legs all that often, and I'm just going to add it onto my torsos. Um, you get hit in the torso, I find far more than the legs, but I'm just balancing out the armor just a slight bit. Not really worried about the rear armor. Actually, center torso, we can take a couple of points off and add a little bit of points to the arms here if we want. Um, but then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the regular LRM ammo, LRM ammo and I'm going to throw in the accuracy LRM ammo that we have sitting in here um, just so that we have that up and running. Uh, I'm also going to pull out a medium laser and I'm going to actually leave another ton of LRM ammo in there because with two tons using the um, accuracy ammo uh, you've only got 200 rounds and when, you, when you're firing 30 per turn that's just a little over six turns of firing your LRMs so to put another ton of LRM ammo in here. It's going to give you another four turns. So there's about 10 turns right here of, of firing LRM ammo. And for me, that far outweighs the medium laser that we've got uh, stuck in here. Um, we've got standard heat sinks. So our heat management right now is not so good. We can fire both our LRM, LRMs or, or medium lasers, but not much else. So I'm um, going to leave it like that. I'm going to confirm this. It's going to be five days. Don't really care. Uh, the Enforcer we're going to have a quick look at. Now the Enforcer usually comes with jump jets. I'm not a big jump jet fan. Um, I find I can do most things on the ground. Um, 
and there's very very few times that I've said to myself, "Geez, I wish I had a jump, wish I had jump jets." So one of the things you can do is just pull out the jump jets. Um, that'll give you two tons right off the bat. So if you're running into heat efficiency problems, which this guy generally doesn't, um, you can add um, more heat sinks. Or in my case here. I want to increase my firepower since this is a guy that's going to be in close fighting. His armor is actually pretty good for being in close fighting, so I'm going to add a medium laser. Then I'm going to go to equipment and I'm going to add a heat sink and just drop it in this torso over here. So our heat sinking has gone down slightly, um, but we've got a little bit more firepower on this guy. And once again, pulling the AC ammo into the torso into the uh, lake here. The other way you could do this is actually I think what I'll do is I'll leave that out and I'm going to put another ton of AC 10 ammo in. Um, generally you shouldn't, with 8 rounds, you probably won't run out of AC-10 ammo. Um, there's a good chance you won't, but um, it's always nice to have that extra round in there because if, it, if you run out and you just wish you had one more shot, it's a pain in the butt. I like to have about 10 or 12 rounds of ammo if I can in, for everything. So that's why I'm sticking the extra ton of ammo in there. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of points off of the legs here. Uh, I'm going to add one more point to each of the arms since that's my primary weapons. And one more point to the back since I'll be in close. Um, and just confirm this. Then we're going to quickly move over to our Centurion. This guy comes with the AC-20 which is kind of cool. Um, but I believe he doesn't have a lot of ammo for it does he? He's got 10. 10 rounds, so that's enough. So we're going to move this down into the legs and the LRM-10 once again moving the ammo into the legs. Now he doesn't have a whole lot of armor on him, so there's a couple things you can do here. Since the LRM-10, um, you're only firing 10 rounds and these, uh, the LRM ammo um, is 120 rounds. If you take out one ton of LRM ammo, um, you still got 12 turns of, of being able to fire your LRM, so you get an extra ton. And I would use that either for armor or another heat sink. The heat sinking is actually pretty good in this. Um, you can put a heat sink in if you want, not a big deal. You could also put an extra ton of AC-20 ammo, but you've got 10 shots, so you're pretty much okay. Um, but what I would normally do is go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then a little bit on the back. Um, and then a couple more on the center torso. Maybe we take a little bit off the torso here and add more to the center, just so that we can get in close um, and not have to worry about dying too quickly. So we're going to confirm that. You could also pull out the LRM-10 and put an right. SRM in if you want, oh, but not a big deal. Good. We want to minimize the time it's going to take here. So our Jenner, you notice already we're already up to 15 days of repair time. Not worried about that right now. So we're going to refit the Jenner have a quick look at what this guy's got. Now you notice that all the mechs you've got here are all stock mechs. Um, so there's a couple things you can do with the Jenner. Um, if we had, uh, if you want to buy medium lasers you can replace these two which is generally a good idea but the big problem with the Jenner is armor, right? It's got almost no armor on it so you really want to crank that armor up. So this, since this guy's a fast moving mech we don't really need the jump jets, so we're going to pull out all those jump jets and we're going to go max armor just to see what we can get out of this right to start with. So it's 35 on each of the legs, which is really nothing. 35 on the arms, which we have nothing in. Um, 60 in each of the torsos, which we do need. Um, 85 in the CT. Uh, 40, 35, 35 in the back. So we've got another, let's just make sure the head's maxed. So we've got about four more we can do. So we're going to put one, two, three, four. Make sure those legs have a bit so we don't get knocked over. Um, you can even pull a little bit more off the arms if you want to because the arms don't have anything in them. They're really just shields. Um, so once again, we're going to be probably relatively close in with this guy. So the back armor, you want to kind of keep up a little bit. Um, just to kind of... Um, if you get hit by a pulse laser in the back, you want to make sure that the max damage the pulse laser does doesn't blow through your armor. Uh, we're going to confirm that. So now we've got 20 days of repair. So... You're thinking, oh man, we, 20 days before we actually do anything. Well, we're going to go to the arc. We're going to go to the sorry navigation real quick. Go to the star map, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have a look around here. I think if we go this way, that's 48 days. Here we go, 18. Uh, Gacrux is 18 days away. Comstar presence, former Star League presence, intersphere level civilization, manufacturing, mining, pirate presence. So it's kind of a good good planet to get stuff on. So we're going to just travel there. It's going to take 18 days. So by the time we get there. Um, most of our mechs will be up ready to go 
and so this is organized chaos is one of the um, pre-scheduled encounters you get this pretty much every single time the last thing you want the thing you want to do is always fill every every uh, corner of the the leopard with uh, parts um, your morale drops down not a big deal we got a while to go but we get the plus five tech po point bonus so we're going to say continue now you notice we have 11 days left for a repair so by the time we get there all our mechs are going to be repaired and ready to go so we'll have ability for a mission this one doesn't really matter uh, this is another thing that you get to extension um, for role playing sake I always set si money aside to pay the fine morale goes up by one so you now your morale is back to normal hit play so hey, here we go We've just completed those upgrades. thank you so the upgrades are done first thing we're going to do now is go right to mech bay 2 mech bay 2 is going to allow you to work on two mechs at once basically doubling or having the amount of time it takes to repair your mechs. I find it's a little bit over depending on how they shuttle mechs into the mech bays. Um, so it's 700,000 but we're going to buy it right away. I know it's losing a lot of money but we've got it at the start so we're not afraid to use it right now. So just go ahead and use it. Don't worry about it. Alright, so it's 10 more days till that's done but 7 more, 8 more days to get to where we're going. So we're using our time to travel there to basically get ourselves in a position that when we start fighting, um, so now our mechs are all updated and we're ready to go. So if we go to mech bay, go to the bays, um, I'm wondering if, let's, let me see here. Um, normally all the gear that you've got stored away doesn't show up right away for some reason. Yeah, so now I think we've got a few more things in here that we didn't have before. Uh, if we go to equipment, yeah, see, endo steel structure shows up. So now I can use endo steel structure, ECM angel, which reduces signature. It's only two tons, but three defense against being hit. So now we can decide where we want to put stuff, right? So uh, this guy definitely needs heat efficiency. So we can decide. Well, we can put endo steel on him, right? Two and a half tons. We could add a half a ton of armor and two more heat sinks, right? If we want to do that. Um, I generally like the missile boats early on. Uh, being able to stand back and hit guys from a distance I find is really important and especially at, at uh, lower levels um, the number of missiles that you're actually firing um, is a huge advantage to being able to hit people so if you got 30 shots that do 4 damage each and only a third of them hit that's still 10 missiles times 4 is 40 damage it's better than than missing with a medium laser for instance right so we're gonna put two more heat sinks in this guy uh, one on each side, and then we got half a ton left, and we're going to apply that here. So we're just going to go one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, and then maybe a little bit more in the back, seven, eight. So we got a little bit more armor. Going to confirm that. Going to feel a little bit more confident, confident with him in battle. Um, we got the ECM Angel. Um, so depending on what you like, what you want to do with the Jenner, you can put that in the Jenner. Pull out the large laser, put the ECM Angel in, and then uh, maybe more armor or something. But we're just going to leave our guys as they are for now. So as you can see, really, the first month, unless you like to jump right into combat, the first month should really be setting up your lance so that you're comfortable with being able to take on the challenges that are going to come. Um, don't feel like you have to jump in because we got three medium mechs and a light mech. Don't think you can just jump in and just hammer out two skull missions unless you're really good at what you're doing. Um, we're gonna put an end to this. That's fine. Morale's decreased by one. I'm not really worried about that. 13 days it'll go back up. So um, now that we're here the first thing I want to do is look at the gear that they've Wait got. Reached, we're gonna visit the store. And I'm just going to go through and see if there's anything we need. So we've got an AC double double plus here. Double the stability damage. And it's 207,000 buying it. we got an AC 20 plus. Bonus for crit. Not really a big fan, so I'm just going to leave it. Medium lasers. We're going to buy two of these. New weapon systems available. Because we're going to swap them out on the Jenner. LRM 15 double plus. Plus two damage. Minus 33% still stability damage. Don't really we really care about stability damage, so we are going to buy this, and we're going to swap out the missile launcher in the uh, New um, the uh, trebuchet arm weapon. These are the things you need to 
be looking out for when you first start. If you can find something that has like th that's like this, that gives you a bonus to hit with your arm weapons, buy it. You're gonna accept that. You just have to decide where you want to put it now, right? So do we want to we want to put it on our AC20. So let's quickly go to our uh, mech bays again. So we're down to 514,000. Not really worried because we're only paying out 170 or 196,000 in the first month. So we've got a couple of months if we don't do anything else really, right? So let's have a look here. So the trebuchet, gonna refit that real quick. So we're gonna put in that missile system that we got. And with the trebuchets, you wanna replace the arm weapons first because you're getting a plus one uh, to hit chance already with your arm. So you wanna have your better weapon in the arm. So we're gonna confirm this. It's only three days, not a big deal. And then we're gonna have a look at our Jenner because we know we want to get rid of those two crappy medium lasers. The Jenner is going to run hot. We're, we're okay with that to start, um, but that's the first thing we're going to look at um, is maybe swapping out some of this stuff, like the, removing the large laser, maybe putting another medium laser or a pulse laser in, and um, either adding heat sinks, uh, more armor, or some stealth stuff, right? That's really important to keep the, keeping the Jenner alive. Armor is the most important thing on light mechs, for sure. Okay, so now we have to decide. Actually, to minimize things, I think I'll just put that on the Enforcer. So our Enforcer is pretty much our Enforcer. We've got three medium lasers, small laser, and we're going to have an AC double 10 on this guy, right? So I'm going to remove this arm, lower arm actuator, pull that right out. We're going to go to Equipment, grab our arm weapon. And it's a little bit heavy, not a big deal. Um, so there's a couple things we can do. We can lose our small laser, um, which really isn't giving us much. So we'll pull that out. And then it's only 0.25 tons left. So one, two, three, four, and we're done. So once again, we've got a better weapon in the arm, which creates more stability damage to be able to knock people over, and plus three to hit with that arm weapon. So now our AC-10 is going to have a really good chance of hitting, right? Um, we've got a defense gyro. We've got this stuff. I'm not going to add any of this stuff in yet. This would this would probably be good on the Centurion. If we use the Centurion as our Brawl Bot, um, we can add the Gyro. Um, but I think for right now, we're probably good. Actually, you know what? We've got time. We've got the double mech. we got the double um, mech bay coming up in two days, so we'll be able to add this before the end of the month. So we're just going to quickly drop that in. So go to Equipment, uh, our Gyro, just drop it straight in there um, and confirm that. Okay, cool. So, go back to the Argo, hit play, and two days later we got that done. Back into engineering. Um, if you have an experienced pilot, you definitely want to pick up the training module. It's the difference between getting, I think it's five experience points per day and 30 experience points to, per day. Um, it can really help out at low levels. Later on, it's not such a big deal, but at low levels, you definitely want to have it. So, we've still got 10 days to our financial report and continue. So now, what have we done in 24 days? Well, we have um, got a second in, uh, second uh, mech bay, so now we can repair our mechs almost twice as fast, which is great. We have um, upgraded our mechs already to a point where they're actually really battle-worthy. Um, normally, when you get stock mechs, you got to worry about, you know, what you got going on, right? But now we've got, you know, bonus to hit weapons, um, extra stability damage, ammo in the proper location so we have less worry about being blown up, more armor, so we're ready to go. All you have to do then is just go to your command center and choose a good contract. Now in choosing contracts for lower levels, if you're not, if you haven't played Rotec before, my suggestion is to choose like the lowest level you, po like the lowest mission you possibly can to start, just to get the feeling for um, trying to fire and hit light max because the Sometimes the to hit chance is really really low, um, and when you salvage stuff, keep your eye o eyes open for um, things like double heat sinks because um, you want to minimize your heat reduction. Anything that's going to reduce the weight of your mech is good. Um, and oftentimes, when you first um, come into the command center and get into your contracts, it doesn't populate with all the contracts that are available. So if you just click off real quick and then come back into contracts it'll display all of them properly here. So now you've got a whole list of them. So 
you know, there's a few things that, a few missions that you can take that are kind of worthwhile. Um, noisy neighbors isn't too bad. Uh, usually it's one lance, sometimes it might be two. It's very low salvage, but it's good cash if you want, if you need to go, go for cash. Um, destroy base missions are generally pretty easy, but you gotta worry about turrets. So you draw out the units, kill the units, then destroy the turrets, then destroy the base. Pretty simple. Um, assassinate missions are good if you want to get good salvage. Um, generally the mech that you're going after will be one level higher than the skull level mission basically so at a one skull you're basically dealing with a medium mech um, at about two two and a half skulls it'll be a heavy mech and then and so on right um, corporate secrets isn't too bad either it's a recovery mission um, so usually recovery missions if it's um, just extracting one person generally then it's only going to be one lance of mechs that you're fighting you might come across the odd chance that there there's um, reinforcements that are that are arrived, but normally it's just one um, one lance of mechs. If it's a person and you know the secrets that they stole, and they're in two different bases, you're definitely facing two lances. So keep that in mind. Um, cease and desist. Um, destroy base again. Same thing. War criminal is assassinate. Um, taking the bait. This one's always tricky. It's kind of a roll of the dice. You never know whether you're going to be facing really, really tough guys or not. Hot landing is usually a uh, battle against one lance. Um, there's been times where I've fought reinforcements, I'm pretty sure, but not 100% sure. Uh, recovery intelligence agents. This is the one I was talking about where you recover the intelligence agents and then you, you secure the, the data in a separate location. So it's going to be two lances you're going to be fighting. Um, Ambush convoy missions, um, generally it's going to be, you're, fa you're facing eight units at once. So as long as you feel comfortable with eight, being able to fight eight units at once, um, then, you know, more, you know, go ahead and take it. Um, but I find, you know, you want to look for um, missions that are going to give you good salvage and good, good cash. It's not always possible. Um, the missions that you can take that are a little higher level, um, that give you good opportunity for money and salvage um, will always be the escort missions and their escort missions are great because you can um, you can deal with one lance at a time so generally before you get to the first the first base there's usually a lance that you have to fight kill them first activate the convoy only after you kind of moved ahead of the con where the convoy is going figure out where it's going move ahead of where they're going to be activate the convoy and then lead them to the next um, location. Uh, usually at lower levels you'll have a lance at the beginning. You'll lead them to the location as soon as the vehicle gets to the extraction point another lance will show up. Generally that's how it's split. Um, and it's great because you get a lot of salvage. Usually it's like 5 of 22 or 4 of, 4 of 17 or whatever it is but usually it's like a high bit and the, the cash outlay is usually pretty good too. But I find for um, the higher skull missions, generally you can go a little higher on those ones. Um, in so like, don't take like a half skull escort because it's really boring. Uh, at lower levels, you can take like a one or a one and a half skull um, escort, or even up to a two skull usually. And the lances that will be there will most likely all be lights, or you might find some medium me medium vehicles or an odd medium mech. Um, but you can always get good salvage out of those. Like I said, five out of 22 is really good salvage. Um, and you can take your time. Um, once those, like depending on the map you're on, the, once the lances um, are initiated, like the first lance, generally it's just a straight up fight, easy to do, activate the convoy, get them to the next location. As long as you're ahead of them, you'll be able to head off the enemy mechs before they actually get to the convoys. Sometimes they're like one move away. I've, I've played a game uh, one of my rogue tech in my rogue tech series is a game where a uh, urban mech basically gets initiative, walks over a hill, and kills the vehicle in the actual recovery zone. I, I, there's nothing I could do about it. Yeah, you, you know, he had a rack AC2, and he just four hits plus I think it was like a small laser or something, and blew the vehicle up. I, nothing I could do about that, right? But most of the time, you can get ahead of them and not have to worry about them destroying the convoy. Um, like I said, on rare occasions, you might find one on the way to the recovery zone. Um, a lance will be in there 
and generally as long as you're shooting at them most of the time they won't shoot at the convoy so you're you're pretty much there just focus fire and kill them all so um, but you know the escort missions usually are the best payouts and the best salvage and they're relatively easy to do they just take a lot longer than the other missions because the vehicles can have a tendency to move slowly so that that's about it so yeah that's my basically the first month of play here um, we still have six days before our financial report we haven't actually done a mission yet but we've upgraded all our mechs we've got our Argo up and running we've got good repair um, now yeah okay we're down to 410,000 but no big deal because we've got that's still two months worth if you look at our finances still two months worth of of um, of salary right basically paying people out right so and if we quickly look at um, let's go to our captain's quarters and go to finances real quick you can see where we're paying our money right so um, 68,000 69,000 for total of, of our guys here and then you know the operating cost is 129,000 the Argo being the biggest right so you know we've really really minimized uh, our initial cash outlay and the good thing about this is um, especially getting rid of those early mech warriors like we saved ourselves what 40 80 about a hundred and forty thousand sea bills a month in wages now it's kind of a horrible thing to, to say because I you know I heard I'm kind of like a socialist and I don't like just like firing people for no reason but this is a game and you're trying to minimize your amount of outlay right so um, that's all that's that's all this for and we you know you can always hire more mech warriors when you're out too right so if you go to the hiring hall you're you know if you lose one guy you can just quickly pick up another one right um, for instance weasel cakes is 16 8 a month right so we could hire this guy for 57,000 real quick if we needed somebody right away right um, or even you know these lower level guys I prefer going with the uh, the stock uh, mech warriors because it just makes it harder for me I like developing them uh, I don't like getting all the free experience in these guys to start with um, so and then you can just kind of if, if you do that do that you then you just hire the person that's gonna cost you the least amount of money like you know 13 2 just go for someone cheap like that but anyway yeah so that's gonna be the end of this video um, it pretty much that's walking through the opening and kind of the opening moves 24 days so one month in and I'm ready to do my first mission um, we've got our mechs up and running now if you choose a starter mech um, I didn't choose a starter mech at the beginning I just took a random lance but if you go into a custom campaign you can actually choose your starter mech and if you you know don't like a challenge you can choose like a thunderbolt or something a really really heavy uh, or you can choose something light like a wolfhound if you like a, a, a good challenge right um, I find the butcher is probably the sort of mid-range is 45 ton mech um, basically based on the enforcer chassis it's an overheater so it'll it's basically designed to overheat enemy and melee um, so that's for me is kind of a good um, good starter mech it's got a lot of different hard points on it so you can pull gear off that you don't want on it put it on other mechs um, add a variety of weaponry change it around so it's pretty versatile so if you want one mech that's really versatile at the start my suggestion is try the butcher um, but other than that just just take what you like and you know play what you like and enjoy it um, so yeah I'm gonna end the uh, the uh, video here and uh, I wish you all luck in Rogue Tech see you later